Hey guys, Vintage here for CG Tuts once again, and we're back with the second half of our UV mapping in 3D Studio Max using the Unwrap modifier tutorial. And uh, in the first part we just uh, did UVs on those primitive objects, uh, so in the second half we're actually going to map this little scene here. Okay, and I'll provide this uh, so you can download it from CG Tuts, and it'll be at the top of the page. Okay, so grab that, open it up. I've included uh, a Max 12 um, or 10, 11, and 12 versions of the scene as well as an OBJ, so you should be able to open it in your version. And if you want to, you can just follow along. Okay, so let's just take a look at the model here, and it's pretty simple, and it's also pretty lightweight. Um, we have a few subdivided pieces, but overall, everything's pretty much low poly. Okay, so we have a, kind of an entrance here, and we have a few trim pieces, uh, obviously a door, a couple of pillars, a fairly simple window here with some framing, Over on the side we have a ladder here, okay, and this has got a couple iterations of TurboSmooth on it. Uh, so we'll look at how to approach those kind of objects. Uh, we also have a couple of simple steps, as well as a grate over here with the drain pipe. Okay, and the frame of this is uh, also uh, TurboSmooth, so we'll look at uh, how to approach those kind of objects uh, a little later on. Let me just turn off this realistic shading for a second. Okay, this pipe isn't actually subdivided but we do have a couple of brackets here that hold it onto the wall, which are, okay. And uh, if we go around the back here, you can see that there's pretty much no uh, back polygons on any of these objects. Okay, and that's an important step. Um, you always wanna get rid of the polygons you don't need, uh, just to save yourself texture space. Um, if you can't see them in the scene and it's not gonna be animated, then you really don't need to have them in there. Okay, so you can just delete off you know, the backs of anything you won't see, which I've already done here on the scene. Okay, uh, for example, these stairs here, if I just zoom in on this, you can see that it has no back and it also has no bottom. Okay, and there's really no reason to have that in there. It's just gonna waste uh, space on your UVs. Okay, so just get rid of that stuff whenever you're working on a scene, if you're not gonna see it. Okay, and what I usually like to do when I'm uh, mapping is I usually start out with the biggest objects first and then just work kind of down to the smaller and smaller pieces until you have the whole scene banged out. Okay, so. Let's maybe start here on this ground. Okay, and this is really, really simple. Uh, it's pretty much just a plane that I've kind of extruded out a curb on the front here. Okay, and we just have a little bit of a crack in the back, uh, and this will be really easy to map. Okay, we also have a hole over here that's cut out where that grate goes through the ground. Okay, so let's start with this guy. I'm just gonna hide everything else. And I've already applied an unwrapping uh, clear to all the pieces of the model. Uh, so we don't need to go through that step again like we did in the first part. We'll just put on an unwrap modifier. Okay, so throw one of those on top. And uh, for something this simple, we're going to use automated mapping uh, to break this up. We're not going to go through cutting in the seams on this particular piece. Okay, so we won't do anything right now. We'll just open up the UV editor window again. Pull this a little bigger. Go to polygon. Turn on sync element there. Just grab all those polygons. And we'll go back up to mapping, down to flat mapping, and we'll just hit OK. OK, and you can see that's going to break that up. And it pretty much kept the plane intact, and it just broke up uh, the curve here. OK, and that's based on, again, the angles of these polygons to each other. OK, we have a chamfered uh, edge here with a bunch of polygons, so you can see that's kind of separate those out here in the unwrap window. All right, so this quickly stitches together. Let's turn off synced element for a second. We'll go over to edge. So we'll just uh, select this edge here. And as you can see, that matches up with that one up there. So for this guy, we'll just hit this loop button down here and that's gonna loop that uh, edge loop for us. Okay, and we can just right click and stitch select it. All right, and it's a really small edge here, but you can see that's been stitched back on. Okay, so we're just gonna follow the same procedure until we have all these pieces back together. All right, so zoom in a little closer there, grab that edge, loop it, and stitch. I'm just gonna use my keyboard shortcut again. Okay, we'll grab it again, and loop, and stitch, loop, and stitch, and one more, loop, and we'll stitch that together. Okay, so now we have this completely attached back together, and it's unfolded uh, where this curve is here. All right, so let's go to Polygon, make sure we have all the polys selected, and back up to Tools, down to Relax, Face Angles, an amount of one and start relax. Okay, that's just going to be really, really slight. Uh, you probably won't even see it move. Okay, so that's good. Let's close that. 
and we'll close this. Turn off our unwrap modifier here, and we'll apply our checker. So let's hit M to open up the material editor. Grab a blank slot there. Open up the diffuse map box. Choose bitmap. Pick that checker image again and apply it, and show it in the viewport. And again, we'll have to turn up the tiling here. So let's do maybe like uh, 20 by 20. And if we zoom in here, we can see that our texture is actually following uh, over the edge here for this curve, which is exactly what we want. Okay, so we've minimized the seams uh, on this whole piece, and we only have them going around the open holes and the outside. Okay, so that's uh, a good UV layout on there. And we have no distortion. Okay, and with something like this, because we have it laid out this way, it's extremely easy to paint on in Photoshop or uh, however you want to do it. Okay, so that's going to take care of that, part, that uh, one piece. Uh, rather than having the checkers displayed in the viewport here, what I usually like to do is just make another uh, material that's a, a different color. Let's do maybe a color of, say, orange. And I usually like to apply the standing objects that I've mapped, uh, just so I can quickly see what I have mapped and what I don't. Okay, so let's unhide everything. Okay, and we'll just apply that on there and we'll apply that uh, orange material to any pieces that we map as we go until we have the whole model uh, orange. Okay, so that was really, really simple. Uh, the stairs here we'll do next and they're also going to be very simple. We'll grab this bottom stair, uh, hide unselected. And for this it does no back and no bottom, so we'll just split these corners up and unfold it quickly. Alright, so let's put on another unwrap modifier. Let's go to edge this time and I'm just going to split these corners. Okay, so grab that corner edge there and loop and convert to a seam. Okay, and you can also use the point to point to this if you want, which we'll maybe do on this corner. Okay, if you're having a problem zooming in, just remember that you can just select an edge and hit Z and I'll zoom in on it. And that's a lot easier. Uh, the rotation will also be based on that selected edge. So once you zoom in, you should be able to rotate freely around that edge rather than the whole model like this. Okay, so for this guy, let's maybe just use point to point. Uh, let's go up, grab it. And we'll just click on that top for it all the way down to the bottom and then right click the end. Okay, so we just have those two seams cut in. And now we can just quickly unfold this. All right, so back to polygon. Let's select this top poly and we'll expand it. You can actually select uh, all the polygons. And for this, let's do a pelt. Let's go to open up pelt mapping here. Move this over and we'll just hit start pelt. Okay, we can turn that off and hit commit. And now that it's pulled out, we'll just quickly relax it down. All right, so back up to tools, down to relax. Let's do face angles and the mount of one and hit start relax. Okay, and that's it. We have good UVs on this piece. Let's just scale it down to fit it into the zero to one grid. And once again, you can go between move, rotate, scale with W, E, and R. Okay, if we zoom in on the corners here, let's just take a look at this. Okay, you can see uh, it's split, but these two edges are almost right on top of each other, so we can actually weld this, uh, these two verts right here if we want to, just to get rid of that seam right there. Okay, so let's select these two. Let's turn off sync element first, grab those two, and hit Control w Okay, and as it's feathering out like this, you can see they're getting farther and farther apart. Uh, we could weld these two like this, uh, but that's going to distort these polygons a little bit. So depending on how much they're pulled, uh, stretching together, you might want to just leave it broken apart like you had it like that. Okay, and that's really not going to be noticeable on such a small uh, corner piece there. Right, let's go over to this side. Grab these two and weld them. Okay, and you can also click on a vert, right click, and go to target weld and then just drag and you can see the cursor has that W and you can just drop it right on top of another vert. Okay, and you can see the cursor change to that white crosshair when you're on top of it. So if you just let go, they're gonna snap together. Okay, and that's how you target weld in the unwrap window. But right now we'll just do it like this. Okay, let's close that. We'll apply our checker for a minute. Okay, and once again, we have the checker continuing over the edges on the side and in the front. Okay, and the only scene we have is a small one right here, which really won't be noticeable uh, with when a texture is applied. Okay, so no distortion there, which is good. Let's actually throw that orange material on there and just move on to the next object here. Okay, so let's grab this stair. Hide everything else. 
zoom in and this also has the back and bottom cut off so we're just going to do it a similar way here and we'll just zoom in on one of these corners here. let's put the unwrap on first go back to edge I'm just going to click on edge here and hit Z okay and with something like this um, you could cut the, this side off as well as the front and the other side and then attach them back on later on but uh, this should easily be able to unfold uh, into a flat um, into flat UVs here uh, without us having to cut this apart all right so we just really need to split the corners here okay when you have a, a double chamfer like this uh, it's best to pick one of the center edges uh, to split. You don't want to split this one because it's going to give you some distortion right here where this kind of curves around. So try to find the edge that's the closest to the actual corner of this piece and then split that one. So we'll just choose maybe uh, this one here. Let's actually do this one. We'll loop that. That should go all the way down to the bottom. So we'll just turn that into a seam. And the exact same thing over on the other side. Grab that same edge, do a loop, and convert to a seam. Okay, and we'll just probably use Pelt on most of these objects because it's a, quick, a little bit quicker. Alright, so grab a polygon and expand it. That should once again fill the entire model. So let's open up Pelt. Start Pelt. Hit stop and commit. Okay, we'll just rotate this around a bit. Kind of straighten it out. Maybe pull this a little bit bigger. And once again, relax it down. Okay. And that looks good here. You can see that we have it uh, nicely unfolded where those overhangs are right here. Okay, and once again, if you want to come in here, you can stitch these two verts together on each end. Okay, and uh, that should be fine for the UVs. We don't need to do anything else to it. So let's go back to Polygon and we'll just scale this down. And because we're going to be attaching the objects together later on, usually what I like to do is just leave. Um, some of the islands outside of the 0 to 1 grid so at the end they're not all stacked on top of each other. That just makes it a little easier to sort things out so I'm actually just going to part this off to the side here. Okay and let's throw the checker on there and we'll see how it looks. Okay and it looks good. Everything's continuing uh, under the edge here and over the top which is what we want as well as on the sides here. Okay, so very little uh, distortion and uh, hardly any seams on this. All right, so we'll put that orange on there. Unhide all. And let's tackle the actual building here. Okay, so let's grab this. Let's turn this off first. Grab that. Hide unselect it. Okay, and this will also be very easy for us to unwrap. Uh, we do have the overhang here, uh, but that should be able to flatten out fine. Uh, we do want to cut out the sides of the inside of the window here. Okay, I left them off the door. Uh, we have no inner polygons there because it was completely covered by those pillars and the door header. Uh, but on the windows here, we're gonna need to cut these out. All right, so let's go to the unwrap, put that on. Let's go to edge. I'm just gonna click on the corner edge here at the bottom of the window and hit Z. All right, and with that selected, I'm actually gonna do a ring. Okay, so I hit this button here to ring. That should select all four corners of the window. Okay, the two at the top there and the two at the bottom. Let's turn that into a seam. Okay, it's a little hard to see here. Um, sometimes in Max, especially 2012, uh, it has a real problem displaying edges sometimes depending on what angle you're looking at them on. Okay, so you can see that, you can barely see that there. All right, so that's a little bit frustrating, but I haven't found a way to fix it yet. Okay, so we'll just do our best with it. Uh, let's also maybe just break these off for now. So I'm gonna select the four edges around the window. Okay. and this one at the top here as well okay just like that and we'll convert that to a seam as well okay and we're going to plane wrap this so let's actually split each of the corners here as well let's grab an edge here we'll do a loop and convert that to a seam and the same thing over on this side loop and convert that to a seam all right so that's everything we need to do here let's go back to polygon let's maybe select this side guy we'll expand it Okay, and that should select the entire side. And we could use Pelt, but let's just use the planar map. So I'm going to click, uh, click on Quick Planar Map. Okay, and we'll come over to the other side and do the exact same thing. Expand that and Quick Planar Map it. And the same thing for the front. Okay, we'll do all these front polygons at the same time. All right, so just give that a planar map as well. And then we'll open up the UV editor here. 
so let's just uh, move these apart a bit. Uh, these are the sides. This is the actual window frame here, which we didn't get yet. So let's. You can either select the four polygons here or just grab them in the unwrap window. And then we'll go up to mapping, flatten mapping, and hit OK. Okay, that's going to break those four off and flatten them out for us. Okay, we can just stitch those back in if we want to. But let's give everything a relax first. All right, so select everything and just relax it again. Okay. And it should only take a second to flatten this out. We hardly have any edges in here. Okay, so we also want to make sure that they're in the right scale. So let's hit the rescale button. Okay, that looks good. And now we can actually stitch some of this back together. Okay, so let's go in, we'll go back to edge, turn off sync to element. And we don't want to stitch these uh, bottom edges here on the corner where that uh, overhang is, uh, this right here. We'll just stitch the edge going out the side and we'll leave this broken apart at the bottom. Okay, so what we'll do here is just select these three edges going up to the top. Okay, and then either right click and stitch select it or use your keyboard shortcut. And same thing here, stitch those back on. Okay, so we've eliminated the seam around the corner here. We do still have it underneath and at the bottom, uh, but we really don't want to stitch this together because it's going to stretch these UVs out. We need to have this kind of shape like this. Okay, so we're going to leave that like that. Um, for the window, you could either leave them separated out the sides, or you could even stitch um, either the top and bottom back in, or even the left and right side. And I'm just going to stitch the sides in. So I'm going to grab this uh, edge here, and we'll just hit S to stitch. And we'll stitch that one in. And we don't want to stitch the top and bottom back on because if we do that, it's going to overlap uh, the side UVs right here and it's going to get the same texture. Okay, so for these two, let's just uh, let's, let's go back to Polygon. Move those a little close together. We'll just uh, maybe move them up and set them in the hole for the window here. Okay, so I'm going to rotate them 9 degrees and we'll just park them in here. Okay, just like that. And we'll scale it all down. And don't worry too much about the scale of these pieces right now. Later on, we'll be scaling everything uh, into the proper proportion to each other so we can pack it all on uh, one sheet. Okay, so I'm just going to park these off to the side again. And that should take care of the UVs on this piece. All right, we'll just put our checker on and check it. Okay. And that's good. All right, so we'll put the uh, orange shader on there and just keep moving on to the other objects here.